Winter is just around the corner and you may be wondering how you can best prepare your hives for the cold season. Hopefully by now you've completed any necessary fall feeding, mite monitoring, and mite treatments for the year. All that there's left to do now is add winter feed, secure your entrances, add insulation, and strap everyone down. Here in the Pacific Northwest, we like to have all of our winterizing done by the end of October, but that may vary depending on your location. To begin winter preparations, you'll need to consolidate hive space. You'll want to remove any empty boxes or top bars and consolidate all the honey stores into one area. This will either be directly above the brood nest in Langstroth hives or worries, and all to one side of the brood nest furthest from the entrance and top bar hives. Remove empty comb to help consolidate, but don't leave any empty frameless gaps. Any empty comb that you do remove can be stored and reused in your hives next year. To properly store comb, you must freeze them for 24 to 48 hours in order to kill wax moth eggs or larvae. It should then be stored in an airtight container to prevent any reinfestation. If you have empty gaps in the hive, you can leave empty comb in its place to provide more insulation or add follower boards to close off the space. Follower boards also increase insulation, making thicker hive walls. On either side of our top honey box here, we have follower boards. So these are just essentially frames that are solid walls of wood. This adds some extra insulation on the sides of our hives and also fills up and closes down the gaps where we've removed some empty comb. Okay, let's move on to emergency feed. If you find that your bees are still a little bit light on food in October, it's time to switch them from liquid syrup to dry feed. Here in the Pacific Northwest, our bees stop taking liquid syrup once our daytime temperatures are consistently below about 55 degrees. And leaving it in the hive after that point can actually cause problems with condensation and moisture buildup. Dry feed also adds a layer of insulation to our hives. So we, in our apiary, tend to add it no matter whether our hives are light on food stores or not. If the bees need to access it later in the winter, it will be there for them. And if they don't end up touching it, we can reuse that sugar as dry feed in the next season, or we can recycle it into syrup in the spring. Our favorite way to provide winter feed is with no-cook candy boards. This process is incredibly simple. It's much easier than making hard candy or fondant. And in our experience, the bees don't seem to tell the difference. To make a no-cook candy board, you'll start by laying your frame hardware cloth side down onto your workspace. In order to avoid making a huge mess, we usually like to work on a vinyl tablecloth or lay some newspaper down, something that can just be thrown away or uh, wiped down really easily. Then you're gonna take your sugar and mix just a little bit of water into it. The idea here is to get your sugar consistency resembling that of sand for a sand castle. Next, you'll scoop all of your wet sugar into the candy board frame, smooth it out, and allow it to dry overnight. Once the sugar is dry, it should be nice and solid, resembling a hard candy. It shouldn't crumble or fall out of the frame. We're super careful about our honey harvest. We never over-harvest, and we always provide fall feed when necessary. So this small amount of sugar has been enough for our hives in the past. If you need more dry feed for your hives, you can construct a candy board frame that will cover the entire top of your hive. This can be really easily DIY'd with a quilt box or a shallow box with hardware cloth stapled to the bottom. In our apiary, we use Vivaldi boards. So our candy board frame comes as a standard component of the equipment, just like this. And we also get the added benefits of the Vivaldi board, like the extra ventilation, insulation, and upper entrance. If you're using a Vivaldi board, the candy board will rest right over the hole in the center and will be surrounded by insulation materials like wood chips or shavings, uh, straw, raw wool, burlap, or any other wicking materials that you have on hand. If you're not using a Vivaldi board, we do always recommend having some kind of top insulation on your hive, like quilt boxes, moisture boards, or foam insulation. Next, you'll need to secure your hive entrances. At minimum, you'll want to have entrance reducers in place. But if you live in an area with an abundance of field mice, like us, you'll need to use mouse guards. If you're working with standard Langstroth equipment, you'll be using entrance reducers like this. If you have a worry hive, their entrance reducers double as mouse guards, and it looks like this. And if you're working with a top bar hive, or you just need extra mouse prevention on any hive style, we really like to use this larger size of hardware cloth. This allows the bees to come and go with ease, but prevents any mice from entering your hive. We also recommend using top entrances. If you're using a Vivaldi board, they have built-in top entrances and you're good to go. 
If not, you can get a notched inner cover or you can use a top entrance shim underneath your inner cover, candy board, or insulation box. There's always going to be some amount of bee die-off during the winter. This can build up along the bottom entrances and prevent the bees from doing their cleansing flights. If you don't have top entrances installed, you're going to need to regularly sweep out your entrance to make sure that the bees have free access. The last step in our winterizing process is strapping hives down to prevent them from being knocked over by high winds. We use ratchet straps attached to hive stands or fed through heavy cinder blocks underneath hive stands for extra stability. And that's it. These winterizing practices work well for us here in Portland, but we have fairly mild, wet winters. If you live in a much colder location, you may need to consider things like wrapping your hives or moving them into an enclosed space. As always, it's a great idea to connect with beekeepers in your area to find out what their practices are, and eventually you'll learn what works best for you and your bees.